And then the uh, last question. What is the ember stone? Oh my god. So at the end of episode one, you find this gigantic machine that's clearly from space. Its capabilities is that it can bring you to other places in the galaxy. That's kind of like the brilliant endpoint of episode one that a lot of people are trying to keep quiet. So I apologize if I just spoiled it for you. If you haven't played EP1, go play EP1 now. The current day story, what's happening with you, your sister, the dark figure in the machine, that's all a current day adventure. But in episode two, the world that you enter is shrouded in mystery. There's something that terrible to happen there, and it's your job to understand what that story is because it has a direct influence on your present. You have the player's narrative, who is that they're, they're trying to find this artifact that they've been sent to Ember to find, and their sister. It'll all lead back to finding Elsie. And the secondary narrative that's running in parallel with you in that, in that it's what happened to Ember. And that story is told by this young royal pair of siblings, a brother and a sister. So the weird woman that you see in episode two art is the queen, her name is Sarah. Yeah, and she's one of the main characters in our game. She is a, she's a very strong female character who is trying to save her world, but everything is stacked up against her. And those two things feed into each other because you're in the now, things are already ruined, and you're seeing all of these story elements play out by way of like holograms and all these, these notes left behind by people who have already been there. So you're learning their story sort of asynchronously as you go. And all of those feed right back into the gameplay, into your experience. Mike Wilson, Hi, the director me. of Cloudhead Games, is going to talk to us about, um, what? Storytelling. Yeah. And virtual reality, I guess. Mm -hmm. Let's have a conversation. So in, in episode one, the story was delivered to the player. Uh, it was a linear experience. In episode two, it's a much more open-ended experience. The advantage of that is that the player is gonna feel like they found story pieces, that they found story moments. It'll feel like a much more natural form of discovery. In Charlie Chaplin, say, the early movies that he made were all about playing with the camera and yeah. like falling over and laughs, and the story didn't matter at all. Like, yeah. who cares why he's a gold miner, you know? Yeah. But how close are we to a VR movie being City Lights where you cry at the end? Yeah. The reason why we have a gender neutral protagonist and a, a strong female character and, you know, hand tones that match human hand tones, hopefully, um, is because we want, to, we want everyone to feel like they're involved. Within virtual reality, if, if you don't feel like you are the main character, then what are we doing here, guys? We want our game to be accessible by everybody. We want everyone to have an equal measure of fun, and we don't want to rely on, you know, the boring tropes that we've been fed for the last like 25 years of video games just because it's easy. The nice thing about VR, about giving players roles in their stories is they get to decide how much of a role they want to have. If they want to be a tourist, they can they can walk around and you know maybe take some pictures of things and some screenshots and they can do the puzzles and they can walk through the world and they can see it or they can they can be like Indiana Jones, right? They can be in the place and interacting with the things and solving stuff and finding artifacts and interacting with strange alien life. They can be space explorers if they really wanted to be. And that option to sort of be there to make that call, to tell the story to themselves the way they want to, um, that's core to video games. But in VR, it's, it's even more so. The way that we present the player with Freedom of Story is that we put a whole bunch of assets into the world but we never demand that you use any of them. We want the player to feel like they're kind of like a story archeologist. If you come to the gallery looking for gameplay, you can totally get that while bypassing the story uh, elements that's what people really do love. But to understand how the context of some puzzles work in our game, you will have to dig into story to get that information. I find it hard to believe that, that any adventure can be all the things you need to know up front to get through it. Uh, one of the reasons that mysteries and adventure are compelling is the unknown. It's that sense of finding out something you didn't know previously and the importance of that. So the Ember Stone is the heart of the mystery of this game. It's what you're looking for. It's the mystery that has shrouded uh, this entire world and has somehow brought upon its downfall. Uh, the player has to find the Ember Stone. I'm not gonna exactly gonna spoil it for you, but it plays into a part in the conclusion of the game and you'll have fun finding it, I hope. That's all I got. <laughs>